rock singer named Justin Moore. We don't do a whole lot of bullshitting up here. We just get up here and play country music. The Justin Moore Podcast is sponsored by Bobcat. Visit them at bobcat.com. Hey, hey, welcome back, everybody, to this week's episode of the Justin Moore Podcast. I'm your old buddy, J.R. the Handler, and with me this week, like every week for the past few years, is none other than Arkansas's own, the singing cowboy, country music song, Justin Moore. What's up, J.M.? How you doing, brother? Hey, buddy. I'm good, man. It's uh, it's Ken's birthday today. Yes. And so I forgot we were doing this, <laughs> and so I'm... I'm late. Uh, apologies, but uh, good to, good to be here with you, buddy. Yes, and uh, we got a special guest today to help uh, tell some of these stories. You've heard his name a million times. You've seen him on here one time in a blizzard for sure that I know of. And oh yeah, maybe I forgot s- about that. Yeah, <laughs> might have seen him a few other times and things. You've 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 heard about him for sure. But Cody V is in the house. Justin's manager, our dear friend, hunting partner buddy brother one of our best friends in the world cody's on the show with us today rocking his own merch just like i would um so what's up cody how are you bro what's up good how are you guys good man, man. i'm yeah i'm good that we got the gang back together I hadn't see, hadn't been in the room with all or talked to all three of you at the same time since we got back from uh pueblo colorado a few weeks ago so i guess let's just you want to just start with that we might as well talk I mean, about the cody trip. had right there. cody had maybe the greatest week ever hunting. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. That week. I oh mean, yeah. It was just. <laughs> oh I yeah. Mean, I mean, if you, if you could have drawn it up, you wouldn't have done a better job. No, it was yeah, uh, it two. Was yeah. No, that's two. Dreams once come in true. Animals in a week. Is not three. Fun. Well, three. Yeah, true. Well, two that I harvested. One that I was a part of. Yeah, it's crazy. Um. Which we'll get into it, but yeah, for those listening, we obviously we went on a bull hunt, and then uh, I went to Nevada for my mom's mule deer tag, and we, while we were searching for deer, we f- came across a mountain lion, and I carry a mountain lion tag, so I was able to harvest a uh, lion as well. <laughs> That's wild. I mean, which is crazy. crazy. Yeah. When you sent us that picture, we were like, did he just do that? And then you got your hand <laughs> down there by its big old fang, and we're like, oh my God, he shot, he just got that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's how. I mean, in relation to like your hand, how big was the paw? Because the paw so, is what I, I I I was looking at and going, "Oh my gosh!" Yeah. So it was actually kind of a it was a medium to small size female. It wasn't that big of a lion. It wasn't like a big tom. But I mean, dude, when you're looking at that thing through the scope, you can't tell if it's a big tom right. or a female. Right. And and when it's yeah. looking at you, it's I mean, it's a full on look- apex predator so it's <laughs> oh yeah it sends, it sends chills down your spine so the paw to answer your question is about probably about i don't know a little bit a little bit bigger than the size of my fist like if you did like a loose fist probably it's probably about that size but that's cool. that's it relaxed um and then when you push the the freaking claws out then i mean you're probably you're reaching about the size of your hand so wow and what's crazy that's too so is cool. when we when we uh we skinned it and everything and gonna try to get it mounted but part of the Nevada law is you have to turn it into the game warden and they check it and they pull tooth for studying it or their age or whatever. So we had to do all the proper steps with that. But one of the steps is because of rigor mortis, it'll lock its jaw obviously. Right. So you have to, and they have to get the tooth out. So you have to get into the jaw and kind of like cut the tendons and cut the, to make sure the jaw stays open. But while you're doing so, dude, their jaw muscles are like, probably half my fist like on either wow. side of there that, that's why they have such that round head is because those jaw muscles are just golly I mean, wow I bet those pounds per inch on that is insane i'm sure so oh yeah, yeah. that was that was like my you said apex for sure. that's the top there, oh, there's dude. nothing there's nothing more evolved to be any better than that that's it that thing does not get hunted. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Carnivore. <laughs> Except yeah, for when Cody's in crazy. town. Except for Cody comes exactly. home. Exactly. <laughs> right, when I come walking through. Yeah. <laughs> well, pretty, I mean, you know, all that. to hunt something that is is hunting you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing, too, that was pretty mind-blowing is most people hunt cats with hounds. You know what I mean? They get a hound dog, and they get a couple of them, and they'll go 
sniff the scent and then they'll go tree it and then you go up to the tree and then you shoot it out of the tree whereas this one we spot and stock a freaking apex predator which is uh yeah, pretty, it's kind of unheard crazy. of yeah. yeah it's very unheard of like even telling the game warden he was like you sure you did it that way and i'm like dude i swear i'm like we're out there deer hunting and so i might as well jump into the story real quick we were i'll just tell it briefly but we we're and cody's from, from nevada for those listening yeah so that's why i was in nevada yeah so that's kind of my home turf especially for hunting that's that's the area i know it's i mean it's kind of like my that's everything i know i don't understand whitetail hunting at all um which that's <laughs> justin's arena but anyway so we're up there we're hunting for my mom's first ever mule deer tag and she's pumped um we get into an area that i had scoped out thought it was gonna be great turns out it wasn't um my buddy comes in for one day which we're, we'll call him up in here in a minute but um he comes in for one day to help us out because we're not seeing anything and that morning we're on one side of the canyon he's on the other <clears throat> and uh we have little radios he radios me that he's glassed up a lion and i was like well i've got a tag in my pocket and he's like well we should probably put a hunt on this thing so anyways we ended up watching it we put it to bed in the morning um it, it was taking a little cat nap pun intended uh, <laughs> in the sun and uh so we watched exactly where it went one of these bushes we took us probably about an hour to get up and around um to that side of the canyon and get in a good position for it um and then yeah we hit a little distress call he had a little coyote call distress call in his truck luckily and uh we knew exactly where it was we hit the call i'm sitting there on the gun already um which I, I ended up being on the gun for like 20 minutes it was crazy um but hit the call popped its head up um sat there and just i mean eye to eye through the scope for that 20 minutes full on like sweating being, in, like I was, being in, in a scope for 20 minutes is oh like the most stressful thing of all time yes. and it was like and you just I mean, want to get in and go boom yes exactly it's, you want to think about it know. like it was so bad right. I had so much like buck fever or adrenaline that right. I'm I'm not moving. I'm prone. I'm on my stomach. I mean, the most perfect setup you can ask for, and it's still the whole gun's just doof, doof, doof. yeah, it's right. Heartbeat all over the, the place. Yeah, yeah, I'm like man. So, anyways, it was it was a rush. Um, full on like I'm like sweating. My face is slipping off the gun. Like it was it was it was a rush. But anyways, it finally stands up. Took a step out and uh, put it right where it needed to be and hammered it. So. Was able to pull That's it off. awesome. How far a shot? Yeah, it was incredible. It was just over 300. I think it was like 315, somewhere in there, which and is similar to the the elk shot I did. was about 300. 320 or something yeah but that's yeah, a lots. lot bigger animal yeah that's what well, i was gonna you say got you got a lot smaller sp- yes <laughs> yeah exactly Kill zone and that's there. what i was worried about and why i waited that 20 minutes because i i was on its face looking at us um and i probably had up to like the top of his chest or her chest um and i could have taken a <laughs> shot but i'm like man i'm that's a six inch window if i i can easily miss that so i right. wait until it stood up and broadsided but <clears throat> anyways yeah it was nuts and that was I think four days after we took down some bulls and, and a cow in Colorado. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So, the, so this is like on the heels of, like you said, like three, four days after you kill your first bull elk. I mean, mm-hmm. and then, um, what was it? A day or two later, you 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 get your yeah, mom was, a, a exactly. Mealy. So yeah, I we mean, see the was, line. I mean, just like crazy. Oh yeah. It was nuts. We saw the lion and realized there's nothing else in there. So we went to a whole different area and um, gained elevation and they were starting to rut up there. So it, it, it was a whole game ch- game plan change of huge bucks, just full rut that we got See, into. See, that's, uh, that, that's interesting that they're, they were rutting, what was that, like three weeks ago, a month ago? Yeah, I mean, that was... They were full rut and it was probably the 25th of October, somewhere in there. Okay, so like the they're... Like white tails in Arkansas are Arkansas. rutting now. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's crazy the difference, mm-hmm. you know. I think I mean, a lot of it too, like and I could be chasing wrong. here. Yeah, I'm not like a wildlife expert, but I think that the cold weather. The yeah, harsher, I think that. Colder yeah, it hits, th- yeah, for the sure. It hits. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, yeah. So, it, which was when I mean, we saw we were in the lower grounds where we where we saw the lion. They weren't rutting at all, and then change location go up a couple thousand more feet and it's snowing and they're full rut so wow it was crazy yeah knocked a great mule deer down my mom put a 
great shot on. It was her first ever hunt, first ever big game, first ever everything. So she was. What a beautiful awesome. picture you sent of her and her uh, the one she took up on with that backdrop. I mean, just beautiful, absolutely, really beautiful yeah, picture. Of her. Really beautiful, <laughs> really beautiful picture. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> you fuckers. Uh, but yeah, that, I, I could, you know, and when we started talking about doing this trip, Justin and I had a conversation early in this year. I think probably about February or March. We had to turn something down we wanted to go to, but it didn't work out for whatever reason. And we were like, man, you know, we're going to miss out on all these opportunities. And we're going to look back one day and be like, man, we could have done this or that or this or that. But we just, you know, a lot of times you just can't. I mean, Justin's got uh, four children and, you know, we, we live different places and we have a busy schedule on and off the road. Uh, so sometimes you just can't. But we decide, we said, you know, we need to take well, advantage of Well, a lot of, of times too, though, Jr. And this, I'm including myself, and I'm probably the the main culprit. A lot of times we can't, but the majority of the time we just go, eh, it's all right. I'll just rather go home. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, that's what I'll say. Yeah, or, or <laughs> yeah, know. we just decide to, to you know, prioritize rest and relaxation over yeah. over over making a memory and we decided then we said you know we need to take advantage of a cup of something we need to start do, making an effort to just make time and you said book it out ahead of time that way we just it'll be in the books we'll just know we have to do it and uh, about so i said you know we ought to try to get with our friend frank who we who we know and I, we know he has a uh elk spread out there elk ranch so reached out to him and we got that plan going and we booked that I mean that was Mar you know February or March we got the wheels going on that to make it happen mm -hmm. and when as it was going along uh, when he was talking about the tags and this and that I thought man you know we got to take Cody I mean we got to he's gonna love this yeah. this is we got to you know we got to have him there I mean, well just, that's his uh, that's his area right too. oh yeah that's it and he 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 would help us as the uh, the the translator between that west western talk <laughs> and our southern talk that which you, you yep. sometimes need um, and. Uh, you know, he was, when I mentioned it to him, he's like, hell yeah, I'll go even if, you know, I don't get to hunt. I just want to go look. I'll help God. I'll do whatever. Um, and, you know, and and for us also, it's like, that's one of our best friends. It's going to be fun just to, we want him there to tell the stories and, you know, rib with and, and you know, cut up right. with too. So, uh, so I, I was glad it got to, I'm glad it worked out. And then you getting to get a tag and I didn't know you hadn't got one before and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, what a trip of a lifetime. And, um, you're you and a, had the and easiest hunt group of all of people. Oh, yeah, all uh, the way around. Totally. Now they made it real yeah. easy for Cody. Cody had Cody tagged out in two days. He just got to drink beer and <laughs> yeah. hang out the rest of the time. Yeah, man, you had to hunt till the last going. second. <laughs> yeah, you guys are dragging yeah. your feet the whole time. I know. Right? <laughs> yeah, I was regretting True. keeping that cow tag. I was like, I didn't think about that when I said I'll just take the cow. I was gonna be the last one to have to take one. Be able to pressure's on. All right. <laughs> well, yeah, literally and, and at the, I. At the bell. I, I, I I, that, I kept saying that. I think I kept telling Cody, I'm like, man, they need to just go kill him a cow real quick. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. we could have done it at any point. I know. I mean, well, we just didn't want to. We just didn't want to mess up. We didn't want to mess but up. It, the, you know, I, I don't lower think the it would have. Do you, Cody? I don't think it would have. I mean, it's such a crapshoot where it's like it could have even helped. You know what I mean? If you shoot all of a sudden, I mean, it jumps some like, bulls, or or it I could mean, ruin it. It's a. It's I wasn't gonna do nothing. But... Stir. I wasn't gonna do nothing. Sterling didn't say to do is what I was gonna <laughs> but do. I was gonna do exactly it, as Sterling told me to do. It ended up working out perfect, but I, yeah, it was. I'm like, dang, man, we. I mean, literally came in right under the gun. <laughs> I like, mean, like, dang. and they they leave me with the. Block. I have to shoot across Earth oh to get God. mine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, JR it's going down. Europe. I got the weight of the whole South on my back for all these Western boys. I'm like, Lord, I got to pull this off. Gun I've never shot in my life. Yeah, yeah so you had to so, take into effect the, the rotation of the earth on your shot. That's I, I, sure. I, literally. Yeah, deep. <laughs> yeah, so JR, for those out there listening, he shot a, a really big cow at – was it 600 yards it was the when we first got there i asked them how far out we were they said 600 i was like good lord you're all boys, <laughs> I, I, was like, boys. Yeah. I said i probably said a little little saltier language but i said <laughs> you know and then so we were like come on and, and i couldn't and i was down for that but there was a, a barbed wire fence and a little piece of a broken branch off a tree and i was like let's try so uh, yeah. we, scoot, we scooted the, uh, up we scooted up about i don't know it seemed like 20 feet it but, was uh, like it was like a horse shot in basketball like off off the roof yeah uh, down uh, yeah. the gutter yeah. 
I'm gonna uh, bank it. Know, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bank, bank it off this. I'm gonna bank <laughs> it off that rock, off that tree, and it's gonna get her in the sweet spot. Uh, I mean, but no, we get, we end up five five thirty nine is what it was. What is what? Uh, I mean that is that's shooting right there, buddy. Jeez. I mean that is. Yeah. I don't care how big an animal it is. Yeah. Five and the picture five forty is. <laughs> I mean that's yeah. getting it. Yeah, right. We don't have to go into detail, but the picture <laughs> that uh Yeah. How how hard did you and I laugh, Cody? Dude. So to <laughs> tell the listeners a little we backstory. Were dying. Well, which we'll get into the whole thing a little bit more detail, but long story short, Justin ends up killing his bull um the same evening, the last evening with, with JR. I, I so, don't know, maybe at thirty minutes before uh, yeah, at most. You at could most, end yeah. you could stop shooting, maybe. Right. And mine mm-hmm. was ten. I mean and that so and the, I had group yeah. The group splits. Some of the the guides go with Jr. to go get the cow to go find it, find and shoot a cow. While um, a couple of the guides and myself and and Justin are standing around Justin's bull and we're taking pictures and things, and <laughs> we're all sitting there wondering, <laughs> man, is he gonna pull it off? Is he, is he like I don't know? Like we think we heard a shot or we keep you hear like shots five or shots or like, in a row. Yeah. <laughs> we're like something's going down. <laughs> all of a sudden, we get a text from Jr. <laughs> Got one <laughs> in the picture. I don't know how graphic we want to be, but the picture, I mean, Justin, you can take it from there. The picture had oh, us well, rolling. <laughs> like the first picture we see, it's an, it's an eyeball popping out. Like one of those, like, I don't know, like one of those, uh, I, the kids have these little squishy, like toys or whatever. And when you squish, when you squeeze them, like the eyeballs pop out, like they do this. What was the, you know? what was the show back today? There was a there was a show with it. The, 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 the cartoon. Uh, was it? Where, oh gosh, it wasn't Beetlejuice, was it? It was Beetlejuice, yeah, yeah, uh, kind of yeah. like that. But yeah, because I had so to because I had to shoot her three the, times. The first once at once at five thirty nine, once at two hundred, and once at. Ten yards. Point so, blank. So the, yeah. so, the, <laughs> so the first picture we get, and it just says "got one." <laughs> it's an eyeball popping out. <laughs> I don't know why that was so funny. I, it was maybe if you're listening to this or watching it, it may be one of those things you had to be there. But I mean, it was we were Cody and I were dying, <laughs> and Frank uh, who who. who who owned all the property and had us uh, hosted us and all that? He's like, yeah, I'd say he got one. <laughs> I think I zoomed in Dude, on a picture was, and screenshot it of the so eyeball funny. <laughs> before the actual oh, animal. Man. Did I see? Gosh, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, hey, I'm just, with ease or pain. I was trying to put her on down. You know, <laughs> got got it done. <laughs> How about got, when they unloaded? It done, sure. How about when they unloaded her? Oh my, <laughs> oh my god oh my god oh goodness i speaking <laughs> of i need to call sterling to get my goggles or my uh, oh yeah you binoculars. left your binoculars yeah Ooh. i need to get them back well i guess only, should, we, I mean, only about a three thousand dollars set of binoculars <laughs> yeah hey yeah. did yeah. you get hear anything back. on when our what, what about the meat cody no, I've yet to hear anything about that. They sounds like everything's on track. I mean, I haven't heard anything. I'm ready for that otherwise. too. I'm gonna clean out my garage and my uh, uh, deep freeze today. Nice. I got a new deep freeze so. just ready for that. <clears throat> there you go. Um, well, I guess we should jump into though, Jr. You can kind of talk more about Frank and that squad we were with. What? Oh man, yeah. Dudes, they all were. Oh, great guys! Yeah, Frank. Uh, Frank is a friend of ours. We met in uh, Pennsylvania. He's from the Hanover area. Um, we he, he's big into um, uh, supporting military and veterans uh, groups and things of that nature. He's friends with a bunch of authors and ex Green Berets and uh, Special Forces guys and that kind of stuff. So when he invited us on this trip, I knew it was going to be top notch. But yeah. It even ex- exceeded my expectations. We get out there. He's got some world class guides uh, that are from Alaska and Idaho that that have have hunted everything all over the world, and they were super cool uh, and, and and normal down to earth guys. But they were the the best of the best. And then he brought in. We mentioned the other week the two, the two chefs um, that came oh, in. Oh, the food was 
from a Ridiculous. from a big lodge in Idaho, but turns out they're actually executive chefs that have traveled all over and worked in all kinds of resorts, and they, and they were great guys <clears throat> as well. And then uh, the the ranch that we were at in Pueblo, uh, it's about twenty miles south of Pueblo. He had, Frank had just acquired this ranch. He'd been hunting there for years and years, and just loved the property and the uh, the game that was available there. And, I, get, I didn't know if – Cody was probably more aware of this than we were, I guess, Justin. We didn't realize that there was – the population of elk was as dense in southern Colorado as it was. I always thought it was more north Mont- – you know, nor- in right. more mountainous area because this wasn't necessarily mountainous area. This was more No, I would desert, say it was more like hill country. Yeah, desert, hill country right. kind of, rocky. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were <laughs> – they felt like mountains to us southerners, but um, – uh, it wasn't like where we had hunted before in northern Colorado, where no. it was literally mountains and and things like that. And then we get there, there was a, we saw a lot of elk. You know, we we took our game, but um, I mean, oh, gosh, saw, guys, how many how many elk you think you saw over the week? A hundred at least. And I was gonna say two hundred, probably maybe. But yeah, we but saw a lot a, of elk. at least a hundred. I mean, yeah, yeah, we saw a ton. I think too, just to, to your point of, it was like the lowlands of Colorado, which is crazy. But <clears throat> I think. It was just elk hit their rut at a certain point, um, and luckily it was we we caught the tail end of that, and they were all the big bulls were down in those those low valleys um, chasing cows, and that's kind of where the cows bed up was where we were. So that's the reason we were able to see so many great bulls. That was that was unreal, especially like that low and that it didn't yeah. feel like we were even. I know this is a hot topic for Justin, but to me it didn't feel like we were we were hiking that much. Um, but whooped his ass. So low, but, to, yeah, to Justin and uh, threw away a pair the of southern, boots. The, well, <laughs> the southern well. boys who don't hike, I get it. You guys are yeah. um, well. Here's you hike up a tree I, stand. I, so I was. I, I was don't told, hike nothing. I don't even hunt here. <laughs> here. Here's what I was told though, Cody. This, this, so it was what I went into it thinking. I was I was told this is country. Oh, this is country club hunting, yeah. which to me is. You just walk out there and wait, and there they are. Um, Drive by. It was not. It was not that. I can promise you. <laughs> you. This are not was like. That. This was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th- this was hunting. It's and hunting I mean, in this organization. I, look, I, yeah, I, I've uh, I've done a lot of hunts where you you got to do a lot of hiking, obviously. But geez, that last one. I was not expecting that. For this trip, uh, yeah, you weren't and all prepared. of a sudden it just and you did and you no. had some boots you hadn't worn in a while that did failed you miserably I failed wore, you. I wore tennis <laughs> shoes, these right here to the, kill that because I did. threw my damn I threw my damn boots away. I said, "Them, <laughs> them some bitches." He said, "I got blisters on the top, the bottom, and the sides <laughs> of my feet." They were a pair of hiking boots I've had for. I don't know, 10 years at least. Wow. But I never use them here. Yeah. I wear cowboy boots to hunt in here. Mm-hmm. And, uh, hey, shout out it, to Ross Brown. Me and Ross wear our Nike miserable. combat boots, and they work for everything. It was absolutely miserable. Hey, uh, just – but so. the, the, the hike on this last trip compared to that one we went with Scooter and them up and Dean and Amber and them that time, nothing. That trip no, was no, some, no, that, that yeah, no. <laughs> we were we were eight <laughs> six I, eight but, years but younger I, too. <laughs> that's that's the point. Like I was expecting that. Right. I was told this was country <laughs> club hunting. Yeah, and it it's a little, certainly was not. Right. Like, yeah, right. You know what I mean? Like it was. Right. It was hunting, hunting, which is yeah, fine. It was hunting, hunting. Yeah. I just I just wasn't expecting it. Especially first right. day, just cl- climb off the tour bus. Yeah, and and well, that that's the other thing. Right like, it. You, yeah. normally when I get to a, uh, you know, I've done a lot of these hunts where you go off somewhere and you go to a lodge, and the first day, I'm just like, I'm kind of wanting to just drink all day. It's a Sunday. We just got off last night, uh, or played a show, you know, the night before, and I'm like. I just want to chill, watch football, keep up with my fantasy stuff. And they're like, boom, let's go hunt. And I'm like, okay, I get, I, I get, okay, I guess we can. <laughs> and then it's like, whoo, like, it's like launched into hunting, like hiking up, 
And you didn't hike the stuff I hiked that day, right? You didn't go. We didn't go together, did we, Cody? You and I did, day? but J- uh, we JR did, did okay. not. Okay, yeah. that hill. Yeah. We went up at the end. Oh yeah, no, that, that was, was some bullshit. Sure. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm like, I I was not expecting all this today. Like, I'm, not, I'm not prepared for this. Yeah, uh, no, my boots funny. sucked. Like the whole. Thing. Did y'all have to go up? Did y'all go up those that same thing we did the next day, Cody? Like that dry creek bed where it's like you climbing up the rocks and all that stuff. It was. It was. It was right near it. We came down uh, something similar and then had to hike a road, but it was that same elevation change of. And then Sterling that, goes, burn. "Let's just go down here," and we're like, "There's nowhere to go yeah. down." What did he it, say? It's like, he goes, "It'll be." He goes. He goes. It'll be fun. Yeah. Right. It, he said it'll be fun, yeah. maybe not enjoyable, but it'll be fun or something like that. And we're like, and I'm like, oh, I, I'm like, I will I did not enjoy that at all. Or nor, like, nor was it fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it neither. was. Yeah, it was awful. <clears throat> that um, uh, that but, that was that next day. We had got Cody and I slept for about an hour and got up and oh, went yeah. hike through some damn ravines and i mean i can't even see good yet it's so early in the morning and it is rocks and we're in these old like creek beds and like it, basically like rivers that weren't there anymore but it's just rocks and we're climbing these rocks and stuff yeah like and i was still, still high I, from the night before yeah, yeah it had took, i took a shot of tequila before we walked out the door that morning literally gummy in a tequila let's roll literally jr wakes up as we're walking out of the building he's like i gotta get me a shot I got to smooth this over <laughs> and just right out the bottle. <laughs> oh, he had that good tequila too, that, that Casa Azul. Oh, oh the, so is that the blue and white the one? The fancy bottle. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm going to ask Frank eight times. Hey, Frank, you sure you don't mind if I open another one of these bottles of tequila? Because <laughs> I you didn't want to keep – I was least, the only one drinking them. Yeah. You, After John you left. Down, <laughs> you put down quite a bit. I, I bet we. I bet three or four of them throughout yeah. the week at least. <laughs> You know, I shared how, some. how great was that food, by the way? Oh, oh man. I mean, it, it, Unreal. I, I was telling, the- I was actually telling my preacher the other day because he's a big hunter. And um, we were at a ball game, uh, Ella's ball game, and he, he was sitting by me. And I was telling him about this hunt because he was telling, he had killed, he's killed a couple of pretty good uh, whitetails uh, this year. And um, I was like, man, we were talking about, he's like, bring me some of that elk. And I go, yeah, you give me some of your deer and I'll give you some elk. And, you know, we're whatever. I'm like, man, I tell you what I ate uh, on this elk hunt. I ate uh, antelope. There's an antelope behind Cody right now, actually. Um, (laughs) I ate antelope tartare. And, (laughs) like... I would never have eaten that in my life, uh-huh. nor would I. I mean, I would never order that or I mean, I don't I like meat and I like it like medium rare, but raw. Eh. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was fantastic. <laughs> it was absolutely I mean, like, fantastic. You put it on a little like uh, I don't know, a little cracker thing. I don't know yeah. what, what little you call it. A piece of toast, a little toast. Yeah, cracker, like a yeah. little. It's fantastic. fantastic. He goes, "What was in it?" I go, "I have no idea. <laughs> I, I don't know what they did to it." But everything. I was like, you know, yeah. when in Rome, you got to do. It. I'm like, I'll, I'll try it. Hell, what whatever. was, I mean, what was? There were some other things that one the night. You elk, like, the elk tacos, I could oh, not yeah. stop eating. There was one thing one day they we had were pickled eating. red onions. Yeah. Oh um, yeah. And you just had the the elk meat on a, a taco shell, and Little you put the tortilla. red onions. Yeah, I mean, so just good. phenomenal. Like you ate, you ate. I remember that next one of those meals. You were like, "I don't even eat this. I don't even like this." It was oh, like um, uh, was it some kind of uh, it was, was a ranch? salad. Uh, like ranch dressing it, or something. I thought it was blue cheese or blue cheese. Uh, yeah, yeah. And you, yeah. yeah. And you were and like, you "I know, don't even you eat." You blue know, uh, Jr. Because <clears throat> like there have been times you've gotten me like a steak or a. They're mac and cheese or something yeah. that had blue cheese in it. And I'm like, Ugh. like yeah. I take a bite and I'm like, but I'm like, I don't even eat this, but it's fantastic. Yeah. Like, I don't, and, so, and then like, you were like, I don't normally would have never eaten this. And then you were like, man, I guess yeah. I should have eaten that avocado thing. But I, I didn't know. I was like everything. I'm just eating anything because yeah, everything I put is, is they just nail it. It was just so good. Yeah. They made fantastic. sloppy joes like 
as if it was a five star resort. Yeah, it was right. Like, it was. Like I think they were, <laughs> uh, were. I think they were elk sloppy joes or something. Not mistaken. Yeah, some kind of ridiculous. most everything they had f- fish. I mean the 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 big the shrimp and grits. The I mean it was just oh sick. the shrimp and grits were great. Yeah, and then the the the. the I don't know what I forgot about that fish. That fish was good. I forget what it was. Sea bass. Is that what and it was? And then they had the and then they had the uh the prime rib. Those four big mm. huge prime ribs were just yep. I mean it was unreal. That was like yeah. night one or something. I'm like, jeez. Yeah, it got it was, yeah, it was sick. crazy. And then, yeah, and breakfast every day. I mean just and, and uh every time you get there there'd be some little apps and soups and uh all right. I'm I'm still working on my breakfast. Uh, smoothie <laughs> deal here, protein shake. So let's get off food. Uh, you want to call a, your buddy a, Cody? And let's get I the ate results. A bacon yeah. and cheese sandwich on white bread earlier. That sounds delicious. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, gonna say one, we, uh, Wonder Bread. <laughs> to um, let me give him a text real quick. Let him know we're about to call. But um, my grandmother just called too. I got I got all my family coming to town. Everybody. So when are they up. coming? Like right now, they're on their way. Moms and oh today. My, oh yeah. Grand. So. On the way, mom's about an hour away now. <laughs> Which you, I mean, you'll you're different, but I was talking to Jeremy. My, you guys know, but for those out there listening, my record producer, uh, his in laws are coming to like, I think he said twenty of them. I believe it may not be twenty, but it's a lot to stay at their house for wow. an entire week. Woo. I'm like, oh, wow. oh my God, God bless you, dude. Like, I couldn't do it. I mean, I couldn't yeah. do it. I mean, I, yeah. I'm. He's like, man, I just gotta, I gotta take it one day at a time. That's all you. Can do. <laughs> it sounded like he was talking about <laughs> sobriety or something. Right. He's, he's like, I gotta take it one day at a time. Like, Kiss man. the baby. I mean, God, can you imagine an entire week? Right. Better have. Better hope. I hope they're I mean, drinkers. Good lord! Like I've got, I'm I'm trying I'm trying to get I'm trying to get through like three hours with mm-hmm. my bunch. <laughs> I mean, <sighs> but a week at your house—that's what we used to do at Grands. But it's just it's just it's not twenty people though, it's like six of us. Yeah, and 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 she was hosting. You were the yeah. guest, right? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, for sure. But imagine having twenty people from Sharice's family at your house for an entire week. Be, be I mean, that's like it's almost impossible. It, well, it is impossible because I don't have a house like Jeremy. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, so, but if, still, if, I mean, if you we would, had twenty people. I mean, this is going to be enough for us. There's going to be nine if, people, nine people, and three dogs at my little house for five days. That's I'm stressed about that enough. Yeah. I can only yeah. imagine him. You're sweeter than I am. I'd be like, y- y'all leave y'all's damn dogs at the kennel. Hey, what's Wizards. up, Sal? Sorry. What's up, T South? Hey. Show me your muscles. Oh, there's South, man. Show, him, show, show me your, your muscles, muscles, Sal. Show Come him. on, boy, I'm going to go there and get you. He told me the other day he had a six pack. He's working on it. <laughs> I got a one pack, South. Look, I got a one. <laughs> He's got a got one pack, one. he said. You didn't Look, see? Sal, I got a one. He's got a one pack. <laughs> I put all mine together. My man. Everybody, welcome to the show. One Thomas South Moore, a.k.a. Here. South Man. I'll put – let me put my other headphone in his ear. Looking good, like you've been staying in the gym, Sal. <laughs> here, put this in here. Protein shakes and chicken sticks doing good protein bottles or something yeah <laughs> south can you hear me buddy hey, hey south can you hear me bud well talk to me silly it's just me it's me and cody what's your favorite thing to eat during thanksgiving besides chicken sticks uh, mashed chicken potatoes nuggets. chicken nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> of course what about mashed potatoes no they're disgusting no, macaroni they're and cheese no what about turkey and dressing? Hold on. Say that again. Keep it in. <laughs> turkey and dressing. Because I got to keep going back to the. No. What about cranberry sauce? No. Peas? No. Beans? Cornbread? No. Chicken nuggets? Yes. 
<laughs> well, that y'all, this is South. This is my one of my godchildren, Justin's youngest child, little baby boy. Pride of the family, carry on the more name. He's all muscle man. He's been in the gym this morning getting his getting his swole on, as you can tell. He's got a six pack. <laughs> he He's, told uh, uh he told uh a friend of ours the other day, I think it was at church. He goes, I got a six pack and she's like, Uh I don't, I'm only counting uh, I'm not counting that much and he goes, Okay, it's four, but I'm working on six. Uh, that's right. <laughs> That's right. Work in progress. Well, it's between seasons. Uh, he's done with flag football for this year, so he's just trying to keep himself up before the next season starts. What's next um, as far as sports for South? What you got next? Base- basketball? Put it in your ear, man. <laughs> um, basketball. No, not ba- no, because we can't play basketball until we're in third grade here. Um, then we're off for the week. I guess baseball would be next. But he's uh all he cares about I so I a couple of years ago I bought him a uh BB gun. Uh Red Rider BB gun. Like the the one from like yeah. a Christmas story. Mm-hmm. And I gave it to him about 2 or 3 weeks ago. And At so that's all huh? At Walmart, I think that's where that he was. He yeah. bought it. Maybe, but um, that's all he wants to do. Like, he came in here to ask me. He's like, "Can we go shoot oh, my BB dude. gun?" <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. That's that's what he's. Hey, into South. Right now. You know, when I was a little boy, you know, I used to shoot my BB gun a lot too. I love shooting my BB gun at targets and all kinds of stuff, shooting at trees, and um, <laughs> that's where I learned to shoot good. And we were just telling a story about Dad and Cody and I going hunting a couple weeks ago. And in my head, I just Dude. kept telling myself, I'm still a little boy with my BB gun shooting squirrels. So you keep practicing, and you can shoot one at 600 yards and you grow up too, bud. <laughs> okay. Hey, you know, JR got shot with a BB gun. Yeah, that's why you have to be careful. I got shot in the mouth with in the face, in, the in my mouth. Hmm? I did. You got to be careful. You can never point a BB gun at a person, ever. Nope. You don't point Not, a gun. Nope. Where do you where do you ask where do you point it? Up or down. Good Up job. Down. Yep. And you always <laughs> and even if it's on safety, that don't matter. You just, just Yep. And even if it's not loaded, <clears throat> you treat it like it's loaded. Absolutely. Right? I am sorry. Yeah, you you good? I right, get out of here. No. <laughs> We'll go sit over there. Oh. Really? So we could just, we just roll into it. So to let the fans know about what was going on while we were hunting was uh, <laughs> Justin and I had a had a rivalry bet going on, um, and I think it was what five hundred bucks for the biggest bull. Yeah, I, th- I thought so. And then so. it was, and then five hundred for something else. Too, well, yeah, it was but. two five hundred dollar bets. So it was a thousand bucks total. The other bet though was the uh, the groundhogs or whatever it was. Yeah. Oh, I won that. Prairie dog. Yeah. Well, you won it because me and JR didn't go. So, <laughs> and that was honestly like the most fun thing we did all week. Really? Y'all would have absolutely loved it. That was the day that JR and I had the one hour sleep. Yeah, shot I killed. In the I think that I was... killed like thirty that day. <laughs> it looked like a good time. Yeah. Was, Eddie, any day, any day on a full night dress would have so been a great even, day. So, we just didn't so, have that luxury. Yeah. So if I that lose nice. this, then we're <laughs> that must even. Must be nice, right? Correct. Yep. Okay. But cool. then if uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. So, anyways, for those listening, I'm gonna call my buddy who um, just picked up the bulls and he measured both. Yeah. So, so, so it, w- w- when we killed them, um, you know, the three of us have all hunted our entire lives, and um, I would say are pretty familiar with, you know, hunting and fairly mm-hmm. well educated on it cody and i thought at the time that he killed his and i killed mine they were pretty similar i mean mm-hmm. we we thought they were so we'll we'll yeah. now we'll see how how similar yeah. they were and the pictures too so like <clears throat> this is back to the story where jr had to run off with the guides to go get the cow i was in charge of taking the pictures of justin's bull and i'm not 
I mean, I've only killed X amount of big game in my life. So there's a lot of different angles that they're really good at, at posing these animals to make them look bigger. Right. So the guides that are really good at that helped me, helped me pose for mine. So my picture, mine looks huge. Justin's picture, I didn't do a good job of taking a photo of it, what, so it doesn't look as big. But in real life, what, they're they're pretty close. What's funny about you saying that is, like, I, I told you this, I think, but mm -hmm. I go out on the road the next weekend, and I think it was Robbie, our crew bus driver. He's like, mm -hmm. man, that's a good boy you killed. He goes, Cody's was huge. <laughs> and I'm like, I mean, they were about the same. <clears throat> and then somebody else, same thing. Somebody else, same thing. I'm like, they were the same size. Like, what? <laughs> Stop it! That's hilarious. It's like holding the fish yeah. up close and then holding yeah, exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, it's all about the yeah, angle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but before we do call, I want to make note of uh, my bull. I think yours had a broken tine too, but mine had like did, two yeah. or three big broken tines. So if you don't know how to score animals like that, it's all based on the length of all of the antlers. Um, so me, and, my bull and, missing. And, and the uh, circumference. circumference. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So mine missing those is going to – lessen my score so it could be because like that in my head i think mine was bigger but because i'm broken i think yours is bigger but had mine not been broken i don't I think know I would have had you it's gonna yeah, be i keep so. what's weird i keep looking at mine that is over my fireplace uh-huh and going is that one bigger or is the one i killed bigger i, like, I, I can't, know it's, it's tough I, it's i think it's pretty close to that one too you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so I know for a fact the one that I saw in the scope that I didn't get a shot at mm -hmm. was freaking huge. Oh yeah, no, I uh, I don't. I think I told you this. I went back and looked at the video because I was videoing that one. That one was a monster. Monster. Yeah. yeah. Monster. That was right, a monster. Let me, let me give him a call here. That that's too bad we didn't get a, a shot at that guy. I know. Mr. Villalobos. What's up, dude? Um, we have you on the podcast here with uh, Justin's um, on the call as well, and we want to know the verdict on these two bulls. What's the verdict? All right, so can you hear him okay, Justin? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let me pull up the score sheets right here. Whose bull do you want first? Tell what? Tell us the scores first, and don't tell us which one. So one bull net scores at 283 and four eights, and the gross score on that same bull is 297 and seven eights. So a gross score and a net score is basically net is with all the deductions. If points don't match on either side, then you have to take a deduction. So let's just say the fourth point, one is 12 inches and one is 10 inches then you have to take a two inch deduction. So the net score is always going to be less than a gross score. So what, when people, when people say, Hey, I killed a X, X score in bull, do they typically give gross or net? If it goes in a record book, um, it's going to be your net score, but you tell all your friends, the gross score, everyone goes. All right. The gross. Uh, okay. <laughs> then we'll go by the gross. How about that? <laughs> so, so one bull goes 283 and four eighths net and 297 and seven eighths gross. And the next bull goes 276 and six eighths net and 313 and one eighths gross. Wow. Oh, wow. shit. So, so, so the two grosses are, was it 313 and two what? 313 gross and 297 gross. So, so what, what, what is the discrepancy? Why? Why is Justin's now thinking we might better stick with those net scores? Well, no, I'm thinking <laughs> why is there such a discrepancy between 277, I think you said, and uh, three, whatever it is. Like, it's a lot different than the other bull. Is my point? As far as the the difference in net and gross, because it, it pretty much depends on how much antler gets gets broken off. Like when you guys killed those bulls in the rut, you had broken antlers. So if you have one point that's completely gone, you have to basically imagine it on the other side of that that same point. Oh, is uh, they take that deduction. They take the lowest score of each point and, and match them on each side. For uh, gotcha. Okay. 
So let's go net then. <laughs> okay, so the net score is two eighty three and four eighths on one bull, and two seventy six and six eighths on the other bull. So it's four. Was it seven inches on net? And I'm get. I'm like guessing yours is the gross. yours is yours is the lower net, Cody, because yours was more busted than mine. That'd be my yeah, guess too. So, but let's, so let's Cody's hear. Bull is, Cody's bull is the two seventy six and six eighths. Justin's bull net score is two eighty three and four eighths. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but but I just said the gross. I, what's the gross again, Marcus? The gross on your bull, Cody, is three thirteen and one eighths. And Justin's uh, gross score is two ninety seven and seven eighths. Yeah. yeah. Damn. So wow, you know, wow. You know, if you're, if you're going down in the Boone and Crockett books, you go off the net score. So technically, Justin's bull is bigger going <sighs> off the net. Cody, your but, bull is but, going off a of gross. But I, I, like an idiot, I said, let's go off a of gross. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is too but, funny. So then I also did but, a calculation. I mean, they were, they, they, so uh, I, I, I didn't catch your name. I apologize. Marcus. Um, Marcus. You've met Marcus. him a couple times. But, uh, but I mean, like, like, like we, we said in the field, we were like, they're pretty similar. I mean, don't you agree they're pretty similar in size? Yeah, they're they're very very similar. Yeah. Um, I also did the calculations of what your guys's elk would have scored if they didn't have any broken points at all. Oh wow! And Justin's bull would have gone three oh seven and seven eighths if he if he matched up his broken sides because he had a Justin's bull had a had a fifth I believe on his right side mm-hmm. was pretty much completely broken off. Um, and then he had a, a first point on the left side that was that was broke about in half. So I calculated it out if they matched up on the other side that wasn't broke. Justin's bull would have gone three oh seven and seven eighths unbroken. And Cody, your bull w- unbroken would have gone three thirty eight and three eighths. Damn, damn, that would have been sick. I'd, so, uh, Marcus, I, I thought that's what you said you did with for the gross. Well, that's, that's, that's no. That's if gross is what's actually there. there. Because if he would have matched the other side, you wouldn't have had that big giant deduction. You might have had one time might have you know only been an inch shorter, and then you only take an inch deduction instead of he had a completely broken off main beam. Got, just got inches you. less yeah. than the other no, side. Net, net Jr. is what's, what's actually there, there. Not, not gross. gross. Well, no, gro- gross, gross no, is no, there. Gross is what's there. Net is minus the deductions. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm, I apologize. Gross is, the, yeah, uh, gross is what yeah. is physically there on the bull as is. Net gotcha. is okay, I misunderstood. Net yeah, is if bad. they take that deduction. And net is how record books work. Like if, if you guys were to shoot, you know, Boone and Crockett record book animals, they go off of a net score. Mm-hmm. So, so Justin won. Damn it, dude! You gotta be kidding me! <laughs> Come on! And it's still, it, but he left us laden with just enough drama to where it's kind of, kind of fulfilled, but it's oh, kind of, yeah. it's still an asterisk. There's almost it, an asterisk. There. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, it, but again, I, I'm the one who said let's go off a of gross, which Cody won. It's, it's just gonna give us something to keep arguing about so, for the next twenty years. <laughs> Here's the way I look at it: like we don't owe each other any money. Yeah, there, yeah that's the there best. You go. We'll just keep that's we'll keep making cost. money off of each other. How about yeah, that? yeah. Marcus said send him the five hundred bucks since he did all the hard work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Right. Hey, hey, Marcus is getting paid plenty. I promise you. <laughs> Marcus is getting paid. Hell yeah. <laughs> Dude, Marcus, thank you. We might have to bring you on our next hunting episode to talk more uh, to more about these kind of things because that you just enlightened us three and thousands of other people probably that didn't know that exact uh, uh, yeah. method to get those numbers. I mean, I knew how you how you measure it, but I didn't know all that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, we'll have to have you on, Marcus. Uh, maybe beginning of next year, sometime or something, to go over some some hunt stories and uh, yeah, that would be sick. What Cody's mountain lion score? Uh, you know, I haven't measured that skull yet. It's it's going to be probably because on a mountain lion they score the diameter of the skull. Uh, um, it'll be pretty small yeah, then, probably, huh? Yeah, I'm guessing that that cat's going to be probably in the in the I don't know, ten, eleven inches. A really, really big mountain lion is like fifteen inches 
in diameter of that that skull. That's like it's bigger than any mountain lion I've ever killed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is absolutely <laughs> none. <laughs> Right. Well, thank you, dude. We appreciate you taking the time and uh, scoring that and taking the time to talk to us today. We uh, brought some bad news to me, but hey, that's all right. <laughs> well, you guys can argue about it because, I mean, yeah. I mean, every everyone goes off the gross as far as telling your friends, but record, you know, the books actually take it as net. So gotcha. your guys are score flip flops, so you guys might just have to flip the coin on who's bigger. Or, <laughs> or go out next year and shoot another bull. Call this one a tie. Exactly. There you go. There we go. Yeah, that's what we need to do. Year, Hell yeah, hell yeah! Again, Fuck yeah! I sent you those score sheets, Cody. You guys can you guys can look at them and you can see the deductions and how everything works out mathematically. Okay, but I sweet. sent you yours and Justin's score sheets. You guys can argue about it. So hell yeah, perfect. Yeah, I'll send that to you, Justin. Here when we get off the, this podcast. Okay, cool. But, but awesome, guys. I appreciate it, and uh, you guys take care of yourselves and have a good rest of your day. I'm gonna get back to work. Hell yeah! All right, Thank man. you, Marcus. Thanks, Thanks Marcus. Marcus. You guys. Thank you. All right, see you, bro. I knew they were close. Dang, down to the wire. Yeah, and just enough discrepancies crazy. there to give us something to still argue about every time y'all have a few want to bring this topic up, I'm oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, dude, yeah. I'm just pumped. I mean. But there was more of mine actually there, but mine yeah, would have been, but mine wasn't. And right, right. if we go by the book, Man, rah, rah, rah. If, <laughs> if yours wouldn't have been broken, what I took from that, if yours wouldn't have been broke. Monster. Monster. Yeah, I'm stud. Beast. Monster. Yeah. He said, Yeah, I just got the text. Unbroken gross would have been three thirty eight. That's that's, I mean, that's a unit. Cause what was uh what were, what was Sterling saying that one that I had in the scope I didn't get a shot at? It was like four hundred plus. He said it was like I think he said three fifty, three sixty or somewhere like it was oh, o- I think it was okay. over three fifty. I think I think he used the term like over 350 or like it was a 350 okay. class or okay. something like that 350 I class I was, yeah i think that's what he said i knew it was yeah. a lot yeah. but it was i a, couldn't remember that was a tank what still yours was what 308 307 308 just that's a if have it not been oh, yeah. unbroken been justin's was 307 yep yeah Un, a, unbroken dude yeah. three, i mean both of them 300 class over 300 are, yeah that's studs. nice boys nice yeah hell yeah and I, and I don't know i wonder i guess they don't do weight for those i guess they don't weigh them actually well, you can't because you got them. I guess you can't. There's no well, way yeah, really yeah. I would have liked to. I, I just assumed. I, I don't know this, but because we're getting four hundred pounds of meat a piece, right? Something I mean, that's like that, what yeah. they told us. Um, so if I would assume they would be like twelve hundred pounds, or have something. to be because I mean, that the bull I that, shot. That's kind of what I guessed anyway. The bull I or the the cow I shot, they said would have been close to seven hundred pounds. So, and they said I was going to get two hundred eighty pounds of meat. So, yeah, yours probably thousand twelve hundred pounds, probably. Yeah, yeah, I'm guessing thousand pounds, twelve hundred. Twelve hundred pounds, yeah. Know. I mean, that's that's huge. Are you kidding? Oh, they're monsters. Those yeah. are like cattle. <laughs> and what's weird is like a moose makes it's them look tiny. tiny. Yeah, twice <laughs> as big. Like, yeah, ain't crazy. that wild? Yeah. That's wild. It really is. Because they're well, they're huge. Yeah, I mean, uh, and and I actually mean, more aggressive. Why, yeah, and the moose, so they say, are even more. Aggressive. When you think about it in terms of something making that look small, right? I mean, it's how big has this crazy. thing got to be? I know, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> that was uh, that was great to finally get that information from the hunt and settle the score once and for all, or <laughs> maybe not. We'll see how it all plays right. out. T- but TBD. so, what did what did mine net? Um, two eighty something. Two eighty something. Net score two eighty three. Yep. Two eighty three. Yeah. So here's what needs to happen. <laughs> we go off the net. <laughs> no, no. Here's what needs to happen. I'm gonna tell everybody I killed a. What was what was my gross? Three oh seven. Your broken gross. So you your unbroken is like the hypothetical. If it didn't break anything, was three oh seven. Your broken gross, like with the breaks. So what you had on the animal was two ninety seven. And then your net score, which is the so rules I, they use. Of and yours was 330-something. My hypothetical was 338, but what was there? All right, on, so here's what needs to happen. I killed a 307, and you killed a 338. That's there. what I would tell <laughs> – I, I, I will be walking around telling people. Yes, that's what I'm going to say, I mean, too, yeah, sure. I mean like, that's, <laughs> that's the way uh, You have to. I mean, come on, yeah. Yeah. It's a fishing story, dude. It gets bigger yeah, every I mean, time. It ain't, or, or it, ain't you, your, or you, it ain't our fault they broke them. 
or you just yeah. act not or you just act <laughs> nonchalant about it. Oh, I mean, you know, it was it was a great hunt. It's three something, you know. I mean, you know, just three just yeah, three something. Just yeah. three yeah. something, you know. Nothing just special. Casual. Just just casual three something. <laughs> Well, that was great. Well, thanks for Marcus for coming on and clearing that up and giving us some valuable information that I hope all the hunters and listeners in general take advantage of out there because, like we said a minute ago, it's some some things we didn't even know. Uh, Moving on from that, I know we've got a few other things we need to talk about today, Coach Drew. I know we've got – Today's episode is sponsored by Bobcat. If you're like me, you don't like to sit still for very long. You look out the window and see possibilities. What if I planted a row of trees over there? It'd be nice to clear that trail in those woods. That's why Bobcat equipment is so great. Its compact size, powerful performance, and big-time versatility will keep up with all your ideas for your property. With a few attachments or implements and a Bobcat tractor, for example, you can do big things in small amounts of time. It's perfect for me when I have a break from touring or recording. Take a look at tractors, utility vehicles, mowers, and more at bobcat.com or pay a visit to your local dealer. Hey, what's up, guys? Justin Moore here. I want to remind everyone out there listening uh, that my wife, Kate, has an awesome children's clothing boutique in downtown Benton, Arkansas. It's central Arkansas. So if you're local, come see us at 119 West South Street in downtown historic benton arkansas Uh, again that's 119 west south street in benton arkansas and if you're not local we ship everywhere so uh you can find us at shopthislittlepiggy.com and see all that we have to offer all that my wife kate has to offer i should say facebook you can find us at shop this little piggy ar and instagram you can find us at shop this little piggy ar but check us out it's called this little piggy and uh See what we got to offer. ShopThisLittlePiggy.com. Hi, y'all. This is Brandon Bing, singer, songwriter, and whiskey maker. You're tuning into the Justin Moore Podcast. Visit EasyLiquor.com to grab your bottle of Bangtail Whiskey and join the Blue Collar Swaller family today. Follow us on all socials at Bangtail Whiskey for more news and updates. Now pour jigger and take this a second ride with us. Hey, gang. As y'all have heard, the Justin Moore Podcast has recently teamed up with Wrangler. Wrangler has been an icon in authentic American style around the world for more than 70 years. With a rich legacy rooted in the American West, Wrangler commits to offering unmatched quality and timeless design. As y'all have heard me and Justin talk about on here, George Strait, Alan Jackson, they're Wranglers. We wear Wranglers too. Its collections are also for men and women, children, to look and feel great, inspiring those who wear them to be strong and ready for life every day. Wrangler is available in retail stores worldwide, including brand flagship stores in Denver and Dallas, department stores, mass market retailers, specialty shops, Western Outfitters, and online. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. And you know you've heard it here, and you've seen it on stage, the Justin Moore Podcast. Dang glad to be partnered up with Wrangler because we're big fans and have been for a long, long time. Can't go wrong with a nice pair of Wranglers, y'all. I wear the Wrangler Retro. Uh, Justin wears the black one some. It's just it's my go-to. Uh, I get mine at Academy. So if you're uh, around an academy or just about anywhere, you can get you a pair of Wranglers, whether you want to look like George Strait or you want to look like JM or you want to look like me. You can get you some Wranglers, and you can do that. Whether you're in North California or South Alabama or Montana, Texas, Ohio, Wyoming, wherever, a pair of Wranglers will get the job done. Long live Cowboys and Plowboys. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. Some Q&A that you've spun around from our, uh, our people on our text line. Uh, and mm-hmm. I want to say that's been a great thing all year. I want to let everybody know to please continue signing up throughout the text list. Um, before we get to the Q&A, though, I think we might as well mention that we've got new music out. Justin's got new music out uh, it's, uh, since uh, the uh, You, Me, and Whiskey uh, song came out with Priscilla uh, last year and did what it did and became the 12th number one single at Country Radio and Priscilla's first. Uh, we've got new music coming out, hoping to make it number lucky number 13 there. Um want to talk about that any just i know we it, the song just came out as we record this it is the 21st kennedy's birthday and the song came out on i believe the 16th is that right cody 16th or 17th? came out friday last friday copy yeah. that the 17th um yeah. came out last friday great reviews i know i've been on some emails and stuff everybody everybody's loving it and all my friends are sending me texts and things i know justin and i've been on a couple of group texts with some of our 
our uh, famous friends, if you want to say, uh, saying that they love the tune too. So um, uh, I don't know if you want to talk about that for a minute, gang, mm-hmm. before we get into Q and A. Yeah, it's uh, I'm excited about it. It's the first single from uh, a new album that'll come out uh, early next year, and I think we're going to name the album after the song. This is my dirt. Um, but you know, a lot, most everybody listening to this knows this, but in case you don't, uh, my grandfather, uh, inherited, uh, the land that I live on and was raised on from his grandfather who raised him. Um, and then I got it from, from my grandfather. And, and so this is kind of an ode, uh, to this property and him and uh, his grandpa and you know our family, the no Webb legacy, absolutely. Yeah, and so uh, I'm I'm really proud of it. I think it's a really well written song. I think it's really good. Um, everybody's uh, responded well to it so far. Um, Cody and I did some some stuff out here on the property. Dude, I'm talking. Um, some video stuff and some photos and that kind of stuff, and we talked about some of the specifics. And uh, but yeah, I'm I'm really excited about it. So um, hopefully everybody's digging it so far. And you wrote this song uh, with Stover and a couple other your writing buddies, did you not? Yeah, we wrote it with. Um, Oh golly, uh, Paul uh, D. Giovanni. Who oh great, has been on a a lot of my stuff over the yeah, last. Yeah, I love Paul. I don't know, two three albums, and um, okay, dude, you got to stop. Like I'm I'm in the middle of something. Uh, yeah, Paul son, for those Randy, uh, uh, those out there listening, not watching. My son keeps interrupting. Um, yeah, Randy Montana is also on it, and great uh, writer. Might have been, might have been Randy's idea. I forget whose idea it was, but uh, yeah, really great guy and great songwriter, and uh, all all three of those guys are no so. doubt. And that came from that came from the Florida sessions, right? Yeah. So this entire album that'll come out early next year. Uh, was from a a five six day trip. I mean the entire thing, and and for the first time in my career, uh, my band is the band playing on the album. Nice. Uh, you know I've had a couple of the guys have played on some you know a song here or there or whatever over the years, but but they did the entire album, uh, my entire band, which is really special to me and uh, really cool to 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 me you know to be able to absolutely um you know they they earn that opportunity but uh to be able to um you know help provide that opportunity is really really cool no doubt man well i know everybody's and they and they did a great job i mean they knocked it out of the park which i knew they would i mean oh yeah Mm -hmm. oh yeah sounds phenomenal yeah, I always I give Tucker either. a hard time, or or Will or whoever it is I'm talking to. I'll be like, "Man, it sounds killer," but like if it's Will, I'm like, "Man, it sounds killer." But whoever played keys was trash. It like ruined the track. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or Tucker, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'm like they had to go in and fix that. But besides that, it was really good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. I was, well, I was laughing at Will, uh, our piano player, for those out there, or keyboard player, for those out there listening. Um, because there was one moment in the studio, he goes, "Hey, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy's my producer. Uh, uh, you got those uh, those sheets to fill out, to make sure we get paid." And I'm like, "Dude, really? Like, like you're you're gonna get paid, Will? Like, for God's sakes! Like, you, that was in poor taste, my friend. Like, to do it right here. Like, That's you're funny. gonna get paid." <laughs> This is your guys' first rodeo. I don't know. Yeah, like, come on, man. <laughs> That's hilarious. Will, do, Will does a lot of session work. He's probably been screwed a few times, and he's just watching his ass. There ain't no telling. <laughs> yeah, but you I'm know? like, yeah. damn, Will. Like, hell, yeah. you, you work for me, bro. I'm going to get you paid. Like, I mean. Yeah. 
Yeah, shout out Will. He's uh, I don't know if you, I mean I know you guys know this, but he's been on like most of the Luke Combs tracks. He's been like he's crossed like two billion streams or some outrageous number um, as a keyboard player. Unreal. Yeah. Yep. Yep. No doubt. Hell of a fisherman too. Well, Cody, you got some Q and A to throw at us. I usually dig it up and spit it out, but um, I'm gonna let you take the reins yeah. today. I, I've got a do got one thing I want to mention here before we get started. Um, on that from a friend of ours from the road sent us all kinds of uh, cool NYC stuff he's a he works for the fire department in New York City he sent us all kinds of cool stuff I got you a shirt in here too Justin but he wrote us a quick little letter uh, a few weeks ago and sent us this one sent this back JR sorry for delay in sending this package out I wanted to extend my thanks to appreciation to you and Justin for all your kindness you guys showed my family at the Coryville PA meet and greet little one is still pissed the rain and mud stopped her from running to the stage for drumsticks lol you guys kick ass thanks for all you do be well and be safe Steve and family just want to give a shout out to Steve and his family uh Steve, Steve Tortellio. I know I was going to mess that up, but I'm trying, Steve-O. But thank you, Steve, and uh, all your brothers and sisters up there at the uh, uh, New York City Fire and Police Department for all they do. And uh, thank you for sending that, buddy. Cool. And then I'll hop in on these. Uh, so just so you guys know, that this group text, um, Justin's fan club texting, is all three of us here. Um, we keep our eye on these. Um, and reply to you guys every once in a while and give you any of our latest info and stuff. So always remember to send us a text. Um, 501-200-4050. Boom. Um, so I sent one out. I, I put anybody that texts us about the podcast, they get thrown into the podcast group. So I sent out a text before we <clears throat> started just to see if anybody wanted to ask you some questions, Justin. But um, first one I got is what do you put on your rider, which is kind of more of a JR question, but. What do you yeah, like to include probably, on your rider? Uh, well, it just depends on what time of the year it is. Um, but the basics for every show, pretty pretty standard issue for us. You know, uh, vodka, Tito's usually, uh, <laughs> whiskey, <laughs> tequila, beer, <laughs> some mixers, yeah. uh, beef jerky, mixed nuts, gum, salsa. basic stuff, salsa, chips salsa. and salsa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, for the longest, it was those peanut butter think bars because everybody would use those as a little snack, but we've kind of faded out of those. Um, I think the I one the, that I noticed the most when I first started working for you was you guys would get a roll of chew every show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we still do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, think, I, think I've, I think I've toned it down to two cans because you had I was gonna say, slacked off for a while and then this yeah. and that. So I think we got it two cans now, but usually get two cans of, yeah, the, two cans I mean, of the, dip the, and two cans of gum. Yeah, typically, like I don't have to buy it anymore. I mean, we we have so much on the on the bus that I don't. And really that was buy. from yeah, that was from Jody Lair or Lair. Thank you, Jody. Um, next one, Justin is from Ryan Penrose. Uh, he says, "JM, your grandpa or grandpas have heavily influenced your songs and your songwriting. Chat about your favorite thing about your grandpa, which kind of goes along with the song." Um, our current single. What is one thing he taught you that you'll never forget? Mm. That's a good. That's a good question. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things that they each of them taught me. Um, that I won't forget. But I mean, my son earlier, when I asked him, like, where do you point a gun? And it's straight up or, you know, on your shoulder um, or straight down. That, that that was anything I tell my kids about guns or gun safety comes from my grandpa. Um, like I, my, my youngest daughter, who's nine, is way into hunting now and shooting guns and um, – we were out shooting, I don't know, two or three, four weeks ago. And I I could hear my – everything I said to her was what was told to me by my grandpa, you know. That's cool. I, so, um, you know, if, if she did this or did that or didn't do this or didn't do that, I was going, you know, <laughs> and that was because he did that to me. 
Um, that's awesome. And then my other my other grandpa. Um, I mean, so many things. I'm trying to think of what would be like the the best thing. Um, uh, you know, my other grandpa was just all about family, and I think I I kind of got that from him, uh, maybe, so to speak. Um, like family over everything. It kind of that was kind of the way he lived his life and. So I kind of learned that from from him. Um, it wasn't necessarily something he said, or but it was a lesson that he taught me because of the way he lived his life, you know. Hell yeah. Next one is uh, from Hunter Robertson. I enjoy listening to every episode as soon as it's out. I have my tickets to the Tacoma, Washington show in April. My question to you is how do you decide on where you're going on tour and who you're going with? He says, I think the JM and Kojo are the perfect pair to go on tour together and play real country music. Shout out Robert <clears throat> guys brothers. Are, yeah, he said yeah, he said from Hunter, one of the twins from the Climb the Ladder podcast. Yep, that's our boys. Good kids. Yeah. They, I met yeah. them in Boise. I met them in Idaho one year. I look out in the crowd and there's these two six seven twins just standing there watching Justin bobbing their heads. <laughs> I was like, who are these guys? And anyway, they reached out to me, but good guys. Anyway. Hell yeah. I don't I mean there's there are a ton of uh conversations and reasons why we do or don't do mm -hmm. uh, you know things on tour um but i agree i mean i think that the the cody uh thing makes a lot of sense for a lot of reasons and um i think you know to to be somewhat gen uh gen general instead of specific but any any time we book a show or a tour, it's it's got to be that you know where, where there it makes sense for a lot of reasons. Um, mm. I don't know if you get you guys may have some more to add to that, but yeah, I mean, just a lot of it's kind of pairing, uh, routing, schedule, things like that. Where are people at in their career, um, and just kind of like you said, their branding, um, the Kojo brand and and our brand is one and the same and uh we've had kojo out in the past and get to do it again and yeah i gonna it's gonna be a hell of a tour if you haven't bought your tickets i highly recommend doing that because they're they're moving really quick so um next one is from our good buddy and former guest chris jolly um what was his username casey pintar casey pintar that's uh right. He says, uh, will JR and Sharice be able to celebrate their anniversary in Durant, Oklahoma while on tour with JM? I think she and Kate should ride the bus and record a new episode. <laughs> that would be, be a good, good one. Well, hey, we know Kate will do it. JR oh, yeah. will not invite Sharice to the podcast. <laughs> I don't she, know if he he's want to scared be of her or what. Yeah. She's got the Boy. dirt on him. Yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> it. She had, she's got all the cards. She knows where the bodies she says, are. This is, she goes, this is my dirt. Yeah, on Jr. <laughs> <laughs> no, we should do that. She she would love to, but uh, and yeah, uh, uh, KC. Yeah, we we actually are. <clears throat> Sharice is gonna fly out with me. We're gonna fly into Dallas, uh, and drive up to Durant and do the show, and then fly, drive back to Dallas and fly home New Year's Day, and then uh, <clears throat> we we. we oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and then we usually celebrate uh, anniversary. Uh, the following week because we got married on New Year's <laughs> Eve and then we had a big party the next weekend with all our friends and family down to Florida. Bama. We had a small wedding in Louisiana on New Year's Eve. So usually these, since we've been married, just about maybe the first year or two, we, we actually went to the Florida Bama and partied. But um, since then, especially since we've lived here, we work. We usually work on our anniversary. We'll both work at the Florida Bama and get off around, you know, before midnight and then party for a couple of hours and end up back at home and kind of take it easy because everybody else is partying on new year's and we're kind of always the opposite of what everybody else is doing so we'll wait and party like january 7th we'll go throw down we'll go go to the keys or we'll hang around here and go party because then we've got the place to ourselves and everything's chill and you know we're the focal point not new year's eve so <laughs> uh so that's it but yeah i appreciate the asking and yes we uh we so we will get to spend it together and yeah that i don't know if we'll get to cut one that day but we'll be there if they get there in time we can set up and record something on the bus i'm down we'll be together in vegas uh in december the four of us yeah but we won't have the bus or any of our gear to record a podcast oh, true which that'll be a good one too anybody listening to the nfr 
Yeah, I've had a few people week. asking Weekend. me about tickets and whatnot. That's a free show, guys. You come to Las Vegas on December 8th and come to the Resorts World Casino and Hotel. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's a free show, so y'all can come. Hmm. Um, just come on. Hell bring yeah. it. Yeah, your cousin Holly actually texted me yesterday about that. I told her the same thing. I was like, it's a free show. Y'all just show up. I'll get y'all some passes. Uh, next one is from Amy Lobb. She's a uh, yep. constant um, concert goer. She has a qu- funny, kind of funny question. She says, uh, from Pittsburgh, Amy and Greg. Greg brought his 23-year-old, 20, hold on, 23-year-old daughter to the Indiana uh, PA meet and greet. She wanted to ask JM how he really feels about people like Greg and I who travel around to see him and do multiple meet and greets, try to stand in the front during the show. Um, he may not recognize us, but does he think old folks like us are nuts for doing that? I mean, what do I think about? I mean, I, I'm appreciative. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know what else I don't. Otherwise I don't really think about it. <laughs> I mean, I, I, there's nothing really that I think about. Um, I, I, I mean, I've, very much appreciate uh, people that come to multiple shows and are enthusiastic about our our music and um you know spend their hard-earned money to to come whether it be a meet and greet or a uh, you know front row or whatever but i i mean I, it almost sounds like she's thinking I would think that it's odd or something. I mean, I don't think that. I, I, no, yeah. I, we don't think I, you're crazy or nuts it. at all. Yeah. yeah. No. no I, we no, love that you guys do I that. Look, I look at it I, as did like, I did I Did I hear that wrong or am I? No, no. she was asking if, she, if we think that she's crazy <clears throat> or nuts. Cause it, oh, it, no, it sound, no, no. It sounded no. like Greg. It sounded like, and you know the couple, Justin. They're our buddies. We talk to, they, yeah, they do. They come to a lot of shows in the area and, and they'll travel too. They're great. And I, I, I Are they the say Steelers fans? Yes, and Greg's daughter, be, yep, Pittsburgh. Yeah, Greg's daughter was probably told them, "You guys are nuts for doing this." He probably, probably thinks you're yeah. nuts too, and so they're trying to say, "No, yeah, no wait a minute, no, not at all. no." And no, what it I, is, I, I mean, and I, I look I'm at it this way: for it, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I, I and, and but 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 I don't spend a whole lot of time thinking about it. To right? Answer, like, I don't, yeah. Like, well, like, you know, and and I look at it as this: you know, everybody's passionate about something. There's people that spend lots of money on all kinds of different things it's just whatever you're into some people go to plays some people go eat dinner my oldest daughter is obsessed with taylor swift and i can't stand her right well but some (laughs) people some some people are into yachting some people are into this or bowling or or hunting or whatever you're hot whatever you're passionate about you probably do some things that people who aren't passionate about that thinks nutty but if you're passionate about something it's what you enjoy doing go i will say this to your point jr and nobody can, because I think you nobody, guys who go sit on a golf course all day are nuts. I'm like, I ain't walking around there all day. I got <laughs> shit I want to do. Yeah. You know? So, um, like, I'm the only one who can speak on this because obviously it's it's me. But like, I do find it like to myself like. It's odd that anybody would care enough about anything I'm doing to do that. You know what I mean? Like, or <laughs> yeah. like get an autograph or a picture or go stand in line to wait to see me or cause I'm like, I'm just an idiot. Like right. I, I'm just like anybody else. Like I just, Sing. That's it. Like I, I mean, you think you I think just, Hank Junior. You think Hank Junior. feels the same way, Justin? No, he don't. <laughs> I, I don't think he thinks that. <laughs> but I, but I, but I do think a lot of artists do think. Oh yeah. Like I oh do, yeah. You know. Oh like, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, like, like I, like when I'm walking around Walmart uh, with my son, who thank God left and went back in the house. Um, <laughs> And somebody comes up and asks for, they freak out and ask for a picture or whatever. I'm like, I, I don't, I don't get it. Like, I don't, I, I'm like, I mean, I'm like, I just farted five minutes ago down the, right. <laughs> in the toy aisle or what, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't, I don't. Well, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like you've aisle. seen, you've seen me light up when I see <laughs> like a wrestler at the airport or something, <laughs> you know, it, I, yeah, I that nobody into, that nobody on earth has ever heard of. And see that, see, because that, not that goes a, back to, it's not, a, it's not, that goes even back to like my a, point. It's not Hulk Hogan. Well, Cody. that's, it's but like, that goes, it's well, like that goes to some crazy random 
Right. Somebody but what I'm saying is Google that's be- like because that you're not in that because you're not in that world. So somebody who likes hip hop music would probably think somebody going to watch a country act because they're not in that world. You know what I'm saying? If that's what right. you like and that's what your world is, you know, like I said, if it's painting or yachting. Well, what's or, weird is like I'm way into country music. If I saw Merle Haggard at the airport, I'd be like, "There's Merle Haggard." Right. I wouldn't go up to him. Like, right. Well, there's different just, kinds of people. Yeah. I yeah. just I'm just different that way. Right. Yes. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll do. Uh, but no, we'll we appreciate you guys. Quick. Y'all be safe and y'all have a happy Thanksgiving. We love you guys, no doubt. Yeah, we'll do two more real quick. Uh, hold on, where to go? Who was the, that uh, in that airport? By the way, it was. Uh, uh, that, that was Gangrel. It was in California. That was Gangrel. Gangrel. That was Gangrel. Yeah, Gangrel, the Vampire <laughs> Warrior. He was in WWF. <laughs> the I Brood. Gangrel. Up and I'm like, yeah, that's that's def- definitely him. Like I showed Jr. He's like, oh, yeah, I knew it was. I'm <laughs> yeah, like, 100%. I've never even heard. <laughs> That's the hilarious. brood, baby, the gangrel. This, this is like 6 a.m. in the morning. David Heath. Absolutely. He I think he was drinking like a, a a Bloody Mary or something. He was, knocking down a, a protein burrito. Of course he was. <laughs> All right, we got two more here. One from uh, Kyle Lawler. He says, hey, guys, it's Kyle, your Canadian NASCAR buddy. What songs are your favorite to perform with the crowd singing along and singing back to you, and what does that feel like? So, what's your favorite song to perform, and I mean, have it, the crowd it, singing back to you? It it feels awesome. Any song, I mean, I've said this in interviews, but to have a an idea, like think about this, Kyle. Like you have, you're doing something around the house, cleaning your garage or whatever, and you have an idea pop in your head, and then eighteen months later. You have ten thousand people singing it back to you. I mean, it's it's crazy. I mean, it's it's really cool. Yeah, it's nice. Um, and um, and it just came from like one little stupid thought that you. I don't know where it came from. It just came, you know. Um, man, it it'd be tough to say which song. Um, I think it changes. Uh, I think it's ever changing. Beta hook is always huge. Um, Letting the night roll is a a, a big song. That's fun. Um, you know the the duet with Priscilla has been really big and uh, gets a great reaction lately. Uh, probably the song that's. <clears throat> to to me the 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 reaction keeps growing each night uh is why we drink i mean i don't i don't really know why that is but um it seems to get song. bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as we go i i, I don't know why but there's more reasons to drink nowadays <laughs> yeah maybe i don't know all right, last I question. I mean, you know what I mean, Jr. I mean, would you agree? Like, every yeah, night, sure. you're like, God dang. It, it gets me fired up, not just because <laughs> I was the star of the video, but, I mean, it, when that song comes on and I'm side <laughs> stage, it's like, all right, shot time. I mean, I'm over here pumped for that. It's a good tune. Yeah, it's just a good yeah. tune. It, it's mm-hmm. That one in Backwoods, I always think the band, if I was up there, I would love to play Backwoods because that just seems like a just a, a, just yeah, a fun, fun, raunchy too. song. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I think you would agree too, Just when the crowd's into it, you can sing anything. It's fun. Yeah, it it doesn't matter. I mean, because you'll get so fired up, you, they'll start chanting back USA to you. You'll sing the Pledge of Allegiance, national anthem, whatever. Yeah, you will love it. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, the the uh, I mean, even like I go out, you know, depending on the the crowd, like and do four or five songs acoustic, and none of them have been singles. But they sing every word. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. so it, it, I don't know. Good, I mean, it good. changes every night, really. Right. I mean, so just bring, be a good crowd. You'll get a good song and everybody else will be happy and love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. This one's from uh, Tyler Vandergiff. Vandergriff. Well, since Thanksgiving is coming up, uh, he says, I don't think it's been answered on the podcast that I can remember, but what is yours or JR's staple Thanksgiving food? The one that you like to fix or a must-have. Mine is homemade banana pudding. Everyone requests that I make it each year. 
I love banana pudding. Uh, I oh, fry God. two turkeys every year, and I make white beans. Um, but my favorite thing, I mean, my turkey's pretty damn good. Uh, <laughs> but I like a green bean casserole and sweet potato casserole. That's my favorite. And I love dressing. Too. Are those green bean casseroles, is that grandpa's recipe? <laughs> grandma's recipe. Grandma's recipe. <laughs> yeah. Uh I'd have to say I I don't cook any I don't cook anything for Thanksgiving, so I can't contribute to that. Not that I couldn't, but I Is never... Grant by, by the way, is Grant cooking for y'all? Mm-mm, I don't think so. Really? Uh uh-uh. uh. Like we so just winging who's it. Cooking? We're winging it. I don't know. Mom, gonna, mom and Sharice. I just gonna piece something together, I guess. Why ain't Grant gonna cook? Uh, she's retired. She's done. She retired. tapped out. <laughs> she told y'all she's retired. Like, I'm not doing it. Uh, she told us that years ago. She kept saying, this, Y'all better enjoy it. It's going to be like many of these left. And then a couple Dang. of years ago, she's a farewell like, yeah. tour. That's why she's we're doing it in cooking. my house. She didn't want to set her house. She's like, We can't even we do it somewhere you're put, else. You're, put, you're putting her up, and she ain't even going to feed you. Uh, but I am going to cook this year. I'm actually going to uh, smoke some stuff on the Traeger. I'm do do a it. turkey on the Traeger. I'm gonna, I've got the small Traeger, so I'm going to do like a turkey breast, and I'm going to do some pork tenderloins, and I'm going to do some – we're going to do some different stuff. We're going to cook some um, – we've got a bit – we're just going to do a ham. My family always likes a ham too, so we're going to do a ham in the oven, and then um, we'll have other stuff. But as far as it comes to eating, I love all of it. But like Justin, I love some uh, green bean casserole, um, sweet potato casserole. I mean – You're oh, like me. It. You love dressing, don't you? And dressing is my number one with giblet yeah. gravy, with good old giblet gravy over some dressing. Gran's got to do that for you. <laughs> it's not happening. She don't have her stuff. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. Gonna happen. It ain't gonna happen. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even delusional to think it might. I'm just already past <laughs> worrying about it. I'm on to other things. But, uh, but yeah, She's and my fine. grandmother's – what it, you know, basically anything my grandmother cooks. Um, so that would be mine. It ain't it ain't fit to eat, but yeah, probably ain't fit to eat. <laughs> so we'll either and if nothing we don't make nothing, we'll end up going. We'll just go somewhere and eat. Floribama has a. If anybody in the on, in the Gulf Coast is looking for something to eat, and don't feel like cooking, go to Floribama. They do a potluck for Thanksgiving where everybody just brings dishes and piles them up down there. And I mean, it's it's a good time. It's a family event. A lot of we've done I bet that. Floribama, I bet like that's the after party. After you eat, I bet that's yeah. popping. A lot of people go up there and actually eat, and then just party the rest of the day. Yeah, you know? I bet. I bet that's a good yeah. time. Because and it's mostly locals and like locals who have family come in town to stay for Thanksgiving. Because like most people are gone to their family, so unless you're planning a trip here or you live here, and you're like we are, uh, it makes sense. And yeah, they have a big potluck and you know specials on this and that. But it's it's a good time. So and, and you don't have to take nothing to eat. Just show up over and eat if you're hungry. Hell, tell them I sent you. Does Jamie uh, cook at all? <laughs> Yeah, he cooks crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. He, what he don't what get does that, that mean? He don't, he don't get that big for not eating. He'll, what does that oh, mean? <laughs> like li- liver king stuff, whatever, anything. Yeah, he'll eat, he'll he'll cook oh, li- beef 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 hearts, liver hearts. I mean, just <laughs> he'll just eat a pound of bacon, uh, or whatever. He'll just eat whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll have to send him some of the lion that I got. A lot of people hey, don't hey, eat lion. Yeah, he would eat that. He'll eat, he's been to Thailand and ate like the bugs on the street that they sell and stuff. He'll <laughs> eat anything. Yeah, he eats wild shit. He'll eat any. He he eats food for fuel. You know, he's eating for fuel, not for pleasure, mouth pleasure. So he he doesn't <laughs> cook for like he, he, he like the. Art you don't of want him cooking, cooking for a group. Or... No, 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 no. No, okay. <laughs> he gets right. you if you're hungry. You can eat, but you don't want to eat it. Yeah. <laughs> he, you can eat. You'll survive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's hell. He two hundred. I don't know how big he is now. Yeah, he's he's huge. But that's that's Liver King shit. He does. <laughs> like he don't eat bread, so he'll take two big old mushrooms and put a elk burger in between it, and put some kind of crazy kimchi mushrooms. special mushroom sauce. Something supposed to be good for you. Yeah, he'll eat whatever. Yeah, what the anyway. hell? <laughs> crazy stuff. Jesus. Legit. Well, Sharice just recently made me throw something out he had had here for last time. And I was like, well, he comes back. He might want to eat it. And she pulls out. She's like, it looks like bait. You know, it was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was some, some kind of heart, beef hearts or something. I don't know. Beef livers. I don't know what it was. Well, I like livers. Get, get Reese to cook some gumbo or something. Yeah, I think she's going to – she did dirty rice last night to have a little snack for everybody. But she's got – I know she's going to put a chicken in the oven, a whole chicken today. And she's got she's got a couple little tricks. She's doing some okay, kind of okay. So, because uh, 
my in-laws do this and i'm like i've never heard of it i mean it's it's great but uh does she do the whole chicken in a uh uh oh gosh uh ceramic or not ceramic uh they have some kind of pot thing that they use oh uh, i don't know i i don't think she does but I've I've never heard of it, but they do it, and and, and she's gonna do a dump cake, fruit dump cake, um, which is like a cake with little fruits and all the stuff in it. But my favorite dessert she ever cooks is chess squares. She makes chess squares, which are got oh, I've heard of that. Thing. Terrible for you, but man, they are delicious. It's basically like you know cake. And it's cream chocolate, cheese and right? No, it's it's um uh, it's just kind of buttery cake and uh like. Cream cheese. Oh, is that with the stuff? coconut on top and the? Uh, it can have stuff on it. I I, maybe exactly I'm thinking of something, it. but it's just this. It, this looks like it's brownies, but they're not brownies. They're made of cream cheese and cake, vanilla cake, I guess, or yellow cake. Anyway, so she's going. I made. That's the only thing I asked her to make is those. And, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. We got. We got. Ain't none of us gonna starve around here. That's what. Well, we hey, you, our, our maybe is, maybe right? you should take this opportunity to uh, learn how to make dressing. Put yeah, Sharice. Sharice said the... she was gonna ask Gran how to make. She, Sharice had texted me the other week, asked me what my favorite dish Gran makes is, because she was gonna learn how to make it and, and ask Gran. And I'm like, my favorite probably is chicken and dumplings, and that's probably the hardest one because you ain't gonna go kill no hen, and you're not gonna roll out, beat out, roll out dough like she right. did so maybe pick something else you just she could just make her cornbread i'd be happy I and mean, sharice can make cornbread but we just we just eat different you know it's uh but i because grand's corn dressing comes from grand's cornbread so if she can make the cornbread we can right. make the dressing you know but mom mom That's and paula one thing i, I will say about my out. wife my wife can make some damn cornbread yeah. it sits in about that much bacon grease right sharice That's just don't eat really good. I mean, Sharice and I, I mean, I eat way more than she does. We, she just not big on that kind of stuff. We don't have kids and we, you know, we don't, so we don't, we just don't cook. Yeah. I mean, we cook, but we don't get too crazy. With I it. don't typically eat that much, but Thanksgiving to me is like it. Like oh, I'm yeah. eating everything. Oh yeah. I was, I went to bed eating cookies last night. Oh yeah. I don't give a damn. I got about, <laughs> I got about a month. I'm gonna, you know, I'll hammer, I'll tighten back down, and then king cake season happens, and then I'll be fine. I, I got a, I got a system, but yeah, this time of what year, kind I don't of cookies, think, JR? What kind of these, uh, infused cookies? You yeah, have right. <laughs> no, these these were for Rouse's. These weren't special cookies from out west, uh, but they were some. I love like they were nuts, little shortbread little cookies with like almonds and walnuts and shit in it. I love that stuff. But uh, oh, yeah. at this time of the year, yeah, I'm like you, Jess. If, if somebody brings the little tin with the little chocolate covered <clears> this <throat> and that's and whatever, I, yeah, I just eat them. I don't even care this time of the year. I just eat them. I don't care yeah. if I get it's, sick. It's my favorite. Them. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. Yeah. Um, yeah. I because love Christmas. you ain't got to worry about presents. You ain't got to worry about. It's just. And the food is like. And the day after Thanksgiving, it might be better than actually Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. Well, that's why we do the ham. You go back because, to the. Yeah, that's why we like do the I, ham. I'll eat the whole like leg of the turkey. Like right. Ken will too. It's her birthday. But like speaking of her, but <laughs> she'll. Me and her will eat the whole leg. Like. We, it's so good. Yeah, I um, that like I said, that's why we do the ham because days after we make it ham sandwiches and you put it in yep. peas and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's uh, <clears throat> it's gonna be interesting, interesting trip this year for everybody here, and I'm sure we'll figure something out. But um, we'll see. I don't know. You got any more for what us, you, Coaster? What are you doing, nope, Cody? I think that wrapped it up. Right now, once we get off this, I'm gonna cook a little my first ever i'm gonna cook turkey with my little sister here in nashville so nice doing a little friends giving here and then uh yeah see how it goes nice i can cook a mean bowl of uh cereal <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how this goes <laughs> all right well i got one little fun fact of the day before we get off here today uh as we're recording this november 21st in 1987 merle haggard released the single twinkle twinkle lucky stars the first single from the album chill factor twinkle twinkle lucky star was the last of merle haggard's 34 number one singles as a solo artist that's when it was the hag twinkle twinkle oh looky there 
Yeah, Poncho. Poncho to come say hi. Hey, hey bud. You guys haven't even seen Poncho, have you? No. Only in pictures. Poncho Villa. <laughs> He's a knucklehead. Oh, yeah. Curse the bones oh, yeah. of Poncho Villa. <laughs> He says like poncho and lefty. Like the oh, exactly. right there. So on Gallo Left de Cielo. Too, so it works. <laughs> awesome. Well, man, well, everybody have a safe and happy Thanksgiving. A lot of people out there on the roads, be careful. I know we talked about hunting. If you're out there in the woods, you know, like Justin said, up or down, leave it on safety. Y'all be careful. Take care of each other. Be safe. Don't do nothing stupid. Don't drink and drive. I know it sounds like, oh, I just had a few. Don't drink and drive. Just don't. Get a ride. Wait till you get home and then pound a bottle like I do. Um, but we want to see we want to see y'all all at these shows before the year's over, if not next year out there. So y'all be safe. Uh, enjoy the time with your family. If you got to work, um, hopefully you'll get to have a few days off soon because I know that's the sucky part in a lot of people's business. You have to actually work on Thanksgiving because the world must keep going. So we appreciate y'all, uh, everybody out there that must, uh, all of our first responders and anybody that has to – has to carry the load on a on a day off. But uh from me, JM, Coadster, this has been Justin Moore Podcast, season five, episode six. Um, I appreciate y'all. We'll see y'all soon. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving. See you guys. Happy Thanksgiving. This episode was brought to you by Bobcat. Check them out at Bobcat.com. For any of you first time listeners out there, at the end of each of our episodes, Uh, I like to do a little reading out of a book I've had that I've got a lot of use out of over the years. Uh, The book is by Mr. Charlie Daniels, uh, and the book is called Let's All Make the Day Count, The Everyday Wisdom of Charlie Daniels. Number 98, Angels Unawares. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Hebrews 13.2. In these days of uncertainty, we tend to be suspicious of strangers, and not without justification. But there was a simpler time when society was more compassionate, or at the very least, more tolerant towards people we'd never seen before. I remember as a child when it was perfectly acceptable for an itinerant, or tramp, as we call them, to go to the back door of a residence and ask for something to eat. They were seldom refused. And someone broke down by the highway could pretty much depend on someone coming by and helping them fix whatever was wrong or they would give them a ride to the place where they could go get help. Unfortunately, for our well-being, we are forced to live by the rules that society has imposed on us and limit our exposure to those we don't know. But occasionally, we come across a situation where the need is obvious and the risk is minimal. That little voice inside says, tells you, help this person. Do it gladly, thankful for the situation. You never know who you're helping. When you reach out your hand to help someone, You usually touch a heart. Let's all make the day count.